So, in this session we are going to discuss uh, frequency meter design, frequency meter design. Now, before we uh, start with this, we will refresh our understanding, basic understanding. Uh, first of all, we try to address what is this, then we try to understand why and we, when we, then we try to understand how. So, this will be our sequence. So, what is a frequency meter? It is an instrument which indicates value of the frequency in variety of the forms. It may have a display, it may have um, LCD display, it may have LED display, it may have some mechanical pointer also, right? it may be a mechanical machine, mechanical instrument or whatever. So, ultimately it will indicate in some or other way the value of the frequency. Everybody understanding this? Right. Now, we try to um, address why. Why do we need a frequency meter? Why do we need frequency meter? We, we need frequency meter because we would like to measure the frequency and make sure that it is appropriate. For example, the mains frequency is expected to be 50 hertz. So, whether it is 50 hertz or not, how, how far it is deviating from the standard value, we would like to know. Another application of knowing frequency is, uh, suppose there is a big machine, uh, maybe like a big motor or turbine or whatever and it is vibrating at uh, say at some frequencies, but the uh, vibrations will give us idea about the mechanical uh, properties of the machine or maybe some bearing has ve ve veered out, some mechanical problems are going to arise later on, but those can be deta detected by vibration analysis ahead of time. So, that you can do preventive maintenance of that machine. So, analysis of uh, uh, signal based on frequency measurement is necessary or useful sometimes. So, frequency is uh, used in variety of uh, applications, well, some of the applications I told you, you can uh, find out some more applications. Uh, in laboratory, we measure frequency, uh, use frequency for uh, characterizing some circuits, plotting the frequency response and so on and later on those circuits like filters can be used in variety of instruments. So, frequency meters are useful. Uh, then we try to see what is frequency, what do we understand by frequency. So, what do we understand by frequency? Frequency is uh, cycles per second, right. So, it is related with 1 upon t, where t is the cycle time, cycle time and its, its uh, unit is hertz or cycles per second cycles per second. So, this fundamental thing is brushed up. Right? Now, we try to understand how do we do frequency measurement. So, fundamental thing behind frequency measurement is that suppose if I try to draw a square wave, of course, we do not always measure the frequency of a square wave, the frequency of any waveform should be measurable because frequency meter should be designed that way. It may be a sine wave, it may be a triangular wave, it may be combination of many waveforms and so on. So, whatever may be the input waveform, the frequency meter should show the frequency of that waveform. This is our aim. How to do that? It is a separate question. We will address that slowly. Right. But to start with, let me draw a square wave and now we know that this is one cycle. We can understand and how many such cycles? are appearing in one second, this will this count will be the frequency, this will be this count in one second, right. So, this is simple, but what happens here is that the reading of uh, frequency is available only once in one second only once in one second. If it is acceptable, we can follow this method. If we want faster readings, then you can measure instead of one second, you can measure the uh, count in 100 milliseconds and then multiply that value by 10 and show that. So, every 100 milliseconds you get a frequency value 
everybody understanding this? Right. If you want uh, still faster reading, then you can actually measure, suppose this is the cycle, I draw the cycle this way. So, instead of measuring the count, you can measure the time period and then take one upon that time period, reciprocal of that time. So, within one cycle, you get the frequency reading. Everybody understanding this? So, it depends on how fast we would like to measure frequency, it depends on the application. If you want fast response, fast reading uh, updation, do 1 upon t for every cycle, right. It will give you instantaneous frequency. It may not be stable over time because the cycles may be changing, but um, if you want fast response, this is the way. If you want slow response, once in a second you can do that. So, these are the ways. When we talk about frequency meter, we need to know some specifications. because we say that we would like to design frequency meter. So, we need to know specifications of existing meter itself. So, first uh, specification is frequency range. E even if we would like to buy a frequency meter, we need to know frequency range. Then whether it is uh, mains operated or battery operated, because that impacts a lot on the design. Second thing, a third thing is input range, input voltage range. It means how, how maximum input, how much is the maximum input of the frequency meter. Fourth is the resolution. Now, here resolution means what is the minimum value of frequency it can identify or measure, whether it is 1 hertz or 10 hertz or 0.1 hertz or 0 0.01 hertz. For example, if the mains frequency meter shows 50.05, then the resolution is 0 0.01 because we are addressing the last digit. It may be afterwards 50.06, so there is a change of 0 0.01. So, the resolution is 0.01. Everybody understanding this? Having high resolution, for example, if I design a frequency meter of say 50.00005 and so on, this looks good, very good actually, but the mains frequency may be fluctuating so much that these uh, digits will be always changing. If it is so, there is no need of showing all these digits. Everybody understanding this? So, in this case, the resolution will be deliberately reduced because there is no use of having high resolution because all the other digits, say later digits are all fluctuating because the frequency itself is fluctu fluctuating. Correct. However, if you want to measure a frequency generated from a crystal oscillator, which is a stable oscillator and whose frequency we would like to know then the resolution can be higher because crystal oscillator is supposed to be stable, its value will not change typically and the accurate value can be found out, but for that you need to have many more uh, decimal points and uh, resolution in that case should be larger. So, it depends on how, how much resolution you want and uh, how much resolution we want, it depends on the application. So, we understood what is the resolution of the instrument. Uh, then the accuracy. Now, accuracy is closeness to the correct value. Accuracy is closeness to the correct value. Accuracy and resolution they are different. Accuracy and resolution they are different. So, resolution means how many decimal points we get. Suppose, the correct value of uh, the signal is 50.00, this is the, we know that this is the correct value. We have a very high uh, end instrument uh, and it is showing 50.00 as the frequency. We believe on that machine uh, or meter, standard meter and then we have designed one more meter which we would like to 
check whether it is giving correct answer or not correct reading so we connected that also to the frequency source and it is showing 51 say sorry 51 so it is away from the real value by 1 hertz whether it is acceptable or not accept acceptable it depends on the application right so correctness deviation from the correct value that is an indication of accuracy right so in both cases the resolution is 0 0.01 because we are addressing two decimal points right fine so resolution is how, how how far we are able to address the smallest part of the frequency and accuracy is how far we are close to the correct value right there is one more term called precision that also we will precision now this precision means repeatability repeatability for example i designed an instrument which shows in the morning 50 after say 5 minutes it shows 51 and afterwards third reading it shows 55 it means the repeatability is not good <coughs> my instrument has very poor repeatability if the repeatability is not repeatability needs the frequency source to be stable frequency source is supposed to be stable i know that it is standard 50.00 hertz but my instrument once shows 50 once more shows 51 and so on so i say that the precision of the instrument is not good obviously accuracy is also not good because it is deviating too much right however suppose my instrument all the time shows 51 51 51 51 all 100 readings are 51 it means the precision is very high its repeatability is very good but the accuracy is not good because it is deviating from the standard value everybody understanding this so we understood the differences between resolution the resolution talks about the number of digits decimal points we typically address smallest value smallest value of quantity we can bifurcate identify so here in this example it is 0 0.01 hertz because we have decim two decimal points right then we address accuracy it is the closeness to the correct value we all understand that and the precision it is the repeatability it is the repeatability of the instrument everybody understanding this so three quantities we understood we understood what is frequency meter what for it is used we went through some applications then we understood why do we need frequency meter uh, then what is frequency and how do we measure the frequency so we use uh, pulses and those pulses are measured uh, over one second or over 100 milliseconds or just measure the time period and take one hour t so that will also give you frequency value right so we understood the specifications frequency range whether it is mains or battery operated input voltage range why do we need input voltage range even if it is a frequency meter it's not a voltmeter but we need to have input voltage range because if if i design a volt uh, frequency meter and uh, sell it to somebody he needs to give the input within the range of that instrument he cannot give 1 kilovolt immediately because the instrument may not be designed for accepting 1 kilovolt of input voltage are we understanding this so there is a range suppose if you design a frequency meter which is designed using say 8051 microcontroller or um, 74 series ICs or TTL ICs in general we know that they accept 5 volt input so obviously in the specifications you will write that this meter which I have designed accepts only TTL inputs it does not in accept sine wave input this is the limitation of your instrument which you will spell out and with that specification if the user uses it it will function properly otherwise it will not function properly everybody understanding this right now we try to understand uh, the block diagram in general in general block diagram 